For many of you, you know that my passion is professional wrestling. I love my professional wrestling. And on Sunday, the WWE had their latest pay-per-view, a SmackDown-only offering on the WWE Network called WWE No Mercy. Last Thursday, we had Paul Benson on the show from Hooked on Wrestling, giving his predictions and views. And today, I'm delighted to welcome to Sportachino DJ Ace, the BBC One Radio One Extra DJ and host of the Kickout podcast, to give his thoughts on the event. Ace, welcome to Sportachino. Did you enjoy Thank No you Mercy? I did enjoy No Mercy, actually. Um, I was saying earlier, I, do, I thought the scheduling of the card was a bit weird, but I think the matches were all very good, actually. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. Because of the presidential election, uh, presidential yeah. election debate between um, Trump and Clinton, they decided to bring the main event between AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose, and John Cena for the WWE World title to the start of the show. Uh, my feeling right. was when I was first watching it, that it was actually really good because you, like me, have been to lots of WWE events and the crowd can get pretty tired. So very often you yeah. may have lost your voice before mm. you even get to the main event. So I found that the crowd was really, really hot for the, for the start of the show, but then the show kind of meandered throughout. What, what, how did you feel about the main event being on first? I, I was excited about the main event being first because I'm a huge uh, Dolph Ziggler fan. So I assumed that it being his uh, almost career-ending match, um, that they would end with it. So I was like, okay, that's cool for Ziggler to either he walks out of the company at the end of the show or he has this really great victorious win um, for the end of the show. But they didn't even do that. So I thought, I, thought, I thought it was a great start. To start with the main event was awesome. But I think how they ended it was really weak. Yeah, uh, we discussed this before we went on the air. I felt that Ziggler Miz should have been the main event. Orton versus Definitely. Bray Wyatt was the main event. Paul Benson last Thursday said he felt that it really was the time for Bray Wyatt to go over and to get a big win against Orton. He certainly got that. Uh, Paul Benson also mm. predicted the return of Luke Harper. That happened. Okay, yes, what? Sportuccino fans, we are giving spoilers. What did you think of what was the main event in the end between Orton and Wyatt? Did you enjoy it? No, and I, I'll be honest, I, I, didn't, I haven't really enjoyed the run-up either. I think um, they've really done a bad job with Bray Wyatt. I think um, when he came, he had the, like, he had the, the, the he was almost... It was almost Undertaker-like. Like his character is so fearful, very strange, uh, and it's almost cultish to a point where people are scared of him. He plays the mind games really well, and he's a great wrestler as well. But he was just taking so many losses that now it doesn't really matter anymore. But we don't really. I don't think he see, he seemed as that much of a threat as he was when he first came to the company. Um, so I, and I'll be honest, I wasn't. I haven't really been enjoying the run up. Like I think him being like the the kind of psycho guy that he is, I think it would be it was really strange that they were able to get Randy Orton in the brain of Bray Wyatt because he's the ultimate mind player. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I haven't really enjoyed the run up, and I didn't. I thought the match was decent. I did like the outcome. I like Luke Harper a lot, uh, but I just think they haven't really been doing Bray Wyatt any favors with all the losses that he's taken over the last couple of years. Mm, I like Luke Harper as well, and. I was kind of glad that Wyatt won. I think with Wyatt, because he did come in with this whole kind of Undertaker-type feel, what was great mm. when he first started is that he didn't really wrestle very much. He only really wrestled on the pay-per-views. Throughout that mm. time, you either had Rowan or Luke Harper doing the dirty work. So when you saw him at a pay-per-view, you were like, oh, I get to see Bray Wyatt, oh, this is right. interesting. Or when he does that kind of weird spider thing where he rolls his head back and you're like, oh, this is creepy. But then when you start to see him more, and the biggest problem, in my opinion, is they get him doing too many promos. You know, right. every so often he'll knock one out the park. And then, but when they're on every week, I'm like, I don't want to hear him just drivel on and talk riddles. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I just fast forward it most of the time. What What do you think of his promos? I think I think he's a victim of being a great talker, and I think 
they do that. When they find someone that's good on the mic, they'll give them way too much time every week. We've seen it with the New Day. Sometimes, like recently, their promos have been hit, hit or miss. Uh, Cass and Enzo, they're good talkers. So, and when you put them, give them a mic every week, sometimes their stuff comes out a little bit rubbish as well. So, I think you're right. It's, they've just got to do it, especially with him. You just got, he's got, to, it's got to feel special. And when you give him a mic every week and give him way too much time, like it was, I think it was like the, on the run up to this match, it wasn't just like one segment. It was every other match. Uh, in between a match was a Bray Wyatt segment and he was like okay this is way too much so I agree with what you said actually mm. so we didn't have Ziggler versus The Miz as the main event JBL on commentary right. called it the match of the night my match of the night was actually the the opener the, what I call the main event for the world title between mm. AJ Styles Cena and Ambrose what was your match of the night I've got to give it to Ziggler and Miz as well. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm a huge Dolph Ziggler fan. I'm actually a I stand for Dolph Ziggler. Do um, um, you know what, though? I would have liked to have seen him lose, lose, actually, if I'm honest, even though I am a fan. Um, and just give him a really like fun way to come back, whether it be at a Rumble or as a different character. I think he's got like so much potential, and I think he can be that top guy. Um, but it was, I thought it was a great match. He like got sprayed in the face. The Spirit Squad came out. I thought it was a really good match. I thought the, the main event was good, but I thought their match was good. And I think they kind of tugged at the heartstrings of people and they and Dolph got the whole card with him. Uh, I love. I hope that carries on with his IC reign now. But yeah, I think that was the match of the night for me. Yeah, the thing with Dolph Ziggler, though, is you've almost had too many of these false dawns where he has a great match or they've put him in a good program and then all of a sudden you think he's going to go to the next level but then it doesn't happen. Uh, for example, when they had that Survivor Series match where he pretty much defeated everyone and you thought, oh, okay, they're really going to push him now and then that, that doesn't happen. It, it becomes frustrated. Were you pleased that AJ Styles retained the title? 100%. I think he has to hold on to the belt for a while. Um, I'm hoping that they turn him face now. I think he's better as a face. Um, I, I think... As a heel, he doesn't really work as a heel if he hasn't got the club with him. And seeing as he's on, this, on the SmackDown on his own, I think they've got to make him a babyface now. And I, and I really want to see Cena Ambrose just go at it for the next few months because um, it feels personal as well. So I, I'm, I'm glad that AJ retained. Mm, uh... Although I thought, that the, I thought that the end in the match was a bit messy. Like if he tapped out, he kind of should have been eliminated from the match. I yeah, I, I felt it. that was the same as well. You know, yeah. uh, really, for me, if they were going to do that, you'd expect maybe Daniel Bryan or Shane McMahon to come out and say, oh, AJ Styles, you've actually been eliminated. You two are going to go for it. But okay. if the plan was always for AJ Styles to, to keep the belt, it, it was just a little bit messy. I know they wanted to still make Cena and Ambrose look strong, but it was all it was a little bit confusing, I think. Yeah, it was a little bit confusing, but I'm glad AJ's retained. Um, I think he is the right guy. He's the he's the top guy on on that show, and I think we're going to see a lot of excitement. I just don't know who who does he feud with now, which is, I think is going to be interesting to see where they go with it. Now, what about the rest of the card? Did anything else take your interest personally? I enjoyed those three matches, but the rest didn't really float my boat. I. You know, Rhino and Heath Slater. Rhino looked good against the Usos, but you know, if Usos are going to have this this new attitude, this new uh, heel turn, that I think they should be the ones going over. I know ultimately they want them to have a feud with American Alpha, and that's where they're going with that. But I was a bit disappointed with that. Um, Alexa Bliss versus Naomi didn't interest me at all. It's a shame Becky Lynch wasn't able to compete. Um, Nikki Bella. Carmella wasn't too bad, um, and I, th I think Nikki Bella was was the right result. Were there any of those matches which you enjoyed, or were there any which you really didn't like? And don't get me started on Baron Corbin. <laughs> I think I, I definitely agree with you. I think the Usos need the belt. I think with this new attitude, I think they look it's so it was so perfect. The heel turn is amazing. I think they they look good. The attitude is great. I think the feud with American Alpha will mean more if they have the belts. I'd love to see American Alpha chase the Usos, 
the heel Usos with the belt. So I um I don't know I don't I'm pre- I'm pretty sure they'll put the belts on the Usos at some point so the American Alpha can chase the Usos for that championship. I think later on down the line where we set the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, that's gonna be an insane match. Um I like Naomi. She's just not over. I, I don't know, man. She doesn't really... I, I don't know what it is, what she has to do, but I think she's a great athlete, and I think she... I, I think this match was a little bit messy, but um, she's not over. I don't know how bad this Becky injury is, and I don't know if they're looking at maybe Naomi to be to, to fill in or whatever, but I don't know if she's as over enough as she needs to be. Um, Baron Corbin, I really, really feel sorry for if I'm honest. I, I just feel like they don't really know what to do with him. Mm, uh, I'm not a massive I, fan of Naomi either, but does she have one of the best entrances in WWE right now, or, or do you not like that gimmick? <laughs> it's different. I think it's a little bit too much dancing. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not an EDM fan or a techno fan, so I can't really appreciate it, but um, I, it looks good, I suppose. The, the, the glow works. Her, but we got to her. And what do you think of Baron Corbin? Um, I think you know what I think he could he could be um, a big star. Um, I just think he's in that really weird no man's land where they don't really know how to like ch- where to channel it or how to to get him over or even make because I feel like he's at he's at that point now where like the crowd don't really even hate him as much as they need to. You know what I mean? And I think there's a few wrestlers at the moment that are in that really weird place where they're not really sure what to do. I think him and Apollo Crews, like, there's new guys that have come to SmackDown and they're kind of just in a weird place. I'm not really sure. Like, where do you go with Baron Corbin? I'm not sure. So, um, I think he's good. I think he's massive. He's a big guy, very dominant. He's a competent wrestler. Um, I just I just don't know where you go with him. What do you do with him? How do you push it forward? And I think that's the WWE's problem with him right now. I don't think they know quite what to do with him either. That's not why. Well, Ace, it's been really great to get your thoughts on Sportachino this morning. You're the host of the Kickout podcast. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that and, and any other things that you're up to right now? Yeah, so um, I've got a kick out, the Kickout podcast, which drops every Thursday uh, with my host Skillet. Skillet is a wrestling geek nerd. You ask him about any mania over the last 30 years, he'll tell you which city and how many people were in attendance. He's insane like that. So we uh, we just chop it up about wrestling each and every week. We run down what happened during Raw and SmackDown and all the pay-per-views and anything that's going on outside of the ring as well. Um, so we do that once a week. Um, I've got a radio show on BBC Radio 1 Extra. I'm on in the weekend, Saturday and Sunday mornings from 6 a.m., and I'm just all over social media as well, so you can check me out at DJ Ace. We will do. DJ Ace, thank you so much for your time today. It was brilliant to get no your problem. thoughts yeah. and thank you for being on Sportachino. Thank you. DJ Ace there, host of the Kickout podcast. Listen to it on iTunes. It's a great listen and I'm sure you really enjoyed what he had to say about WWE No Mercy. We'll be previewing and reviewing every WWE pay-per-view on Sportachino.